Chapter 21 Reporting to the head you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 21 Reporting to the head translator Radiant Editor Radiant the Tranquil Sun Province was located in the northeast part of the continent. During the winters it became chilly, and it wasn't unusual to see frost covering the ground. You aren't entering the mountain range of desolation today. Zong Ling and Shuang walked shoulder by shoulder. Is it because you have hunted the Shadow Leopard? The Shadow Leopard's body was worth more than 100,000 gold coins. The purpose of entering the mountain was accomplished. Making money for his brother's tuition. No. Shuang smiled, I made some breakthroughs during my battle with the Leopard and then trained all night without a single break. I want to continue practicing my spear techniques. After a good night's sleep, I'll enter the mountain eliminate the silver wolf pack. Eliminate the whole wolf pack. Are you confident in being able to do this? Yes. Shuang nodded. Before his breakthrough, Shuang only had a 10% chance of succeeding. Shuang would only be courting death. But now. His spear technique had progressed greatly. Even if he didn't burst out the power of his primordial bloodline, he would still be able to reach the Ten Spear Realm. And before this, he was only able to reach the Five Spear Realm. This was an inconceivable improvement. It's fine then. As long as you're confident. Zong Ling was pleased in his heart and elated knowing that Shuang had grown stronger once more. Noon the next day. Inside a segment of the mountain range of Desolation's gloomy forests, countless howling wolves could be heard. As soon as one howl subsided, another arose. These howls were either caused by fear or irritation. The carcasses of silver moon wolves were scattered everywhere. The huge silver moon wolf king stood atop a huge boulder and snarled while a vast pack of silver moon wolves rushed towards a black. Clothed youngster. Die. The black clothed youth forged on ahead. Fluttering snowflakes. The ice dot cold shadow of a spear. With every flick of the spear, a silver moon wolf would collapse. Each wolf had their throat, skull, or another vital point pierced through without exception. His spear techniques were too fast. Despite the silver moon wolf's frantic siege from all sides, none of them were able to break through the reach Shui Ying's spear techniques. All who dared to approach him had died. This pack of silver moon wolves was akin to the local area's overlords. None of the other magical beasts dared to provoke them. Even human troops who had come to wipe out some of the magical beasts would suffer numerous fatalities. Silver moon wolves had large bodies which made their blows extremely powerful. They had no sense of fear in their hearts. A pack of silver moon wolves was as strong as two or three hundred heaven rank knights. These demons could truly be considered a nightmare. But now, Dong Bo Shuang was the nightmare for these silver moon wolves. Die, die then. Shuang didn't relent in the least as he slaughtered the silver moon wolves. Magical beasts were the enemies of humanity, after all. In the time of humanity's weakness, magical beasts ravaged cities across the land. This was the reason human troops had continued risking their lives wiping out these magical beasts. Roar. The Silver Moon Wolf King charged towards Shui Ying. Come on. Shui Ying's eyes shined. Get out of my way. The spear within Shui Ying's hands became as nimble as a flood dragon, thrashing the two Silver Moon Wolves in front of him. They were sent flying and tumbling to the sidelines. As a great spear master, the control he held over his spear's power was extremely fine. They were simply searching for a snake in the grass. With a slash of his spear, all of the silver moon wolves parted to the sides like morning grass, opening a direct path from Shuang to the silver moon wolf king. The silver moon wolf king was startled. It originally wanted to besiege Shuang together with its subordinates. Confronted with this human youngster's imposing manner, it had felt a trace of fear so great, that it wanted to turn tail and flee. But it was too late. Pooh! 
The spear whistled as it pierced towards the Silver Moon Wolf King. Get up. Shuang had abruptly exerted his strength. The spear was thrust with all of his fury and struck the body of the Silver Moon Wolf King. Peng a muffled sound echoed out when the spear struck the Silver Moon Wolf King's firm belly. It let out an anguished howl as blood oozed out of its mouth and nose before tumbling and collapsing to the side. Phew! With a spear as fast as lightning, he had instantly pierced through the Silver Moon Wolf King's fur and then its throat. The huge Wolf King's body was bound to the ground. Its body lacked the strength to even struggle. The remaining Silver Moon Wolves all retreated in fear. This black-clothed youngster was simply too terrifying for them. A woo. A woo. These Silver Moon Wolves howled in fear before quickly turning around and fleeing in all directions. Beautiful. I didn't expect that you would be able to face this entire pack of Silver Moon Wolves with so little effort, Zong Ling said as he revealed himself. My spear technique is extremely suited to countering sieges, said Dong Bo Shuang with a smile, quickly dissect and gather the materials, Zong Ling said in haste. Even though this area is the Silver Moon Wolf Pack's territory, other demon beasts will soon arrive. Let me dissect those, I am more used to it. Kakaka. Zong Ling took out six knives, his six arms danced in a precise beauty, swiftly dissecting the Silver Wolf King. This is the Silver Moon Heart. Dong Bo Shuang quickly put it into an iron box and safely stored it safely into his storage pendant. There was little space left due to the Shadow Leopard size, but there was still enough to store this small box. After picking up some precious materials, they skinned the Silver Moon Wolf King. What a pity. The meat of a Silver Moon Wolf King beast could be sold for a high price. Leaving it here is such a waste. Zong Ling shook his head. How could one lift a body that weighed one ton? Even if one could lift it up, how would one move? Never mind the weight, the scent of blood would attract all the demon beasts too. Let's go. Zong Ling folded the fur of the Silver Moon Wolf King, larger than any man, and tied it together with a belt. The fur weighs more than 100 kilograms, said Zong Ling with a hint of surprise. Let me carry it. Dong Bo Shuang was strong to the point that even 100 kilograms would mean nothing to him. The Wolf King's skull hung to his side after having to carry the folded silver Wolf King's fur. A pure snow. White Silver Moon Wolf King's fur was indeed beautiful, its color vibrant and the intensity much deeper than that of a common silver wolf. Many nobles fancied this sort of material. It gave off a domineering vibe when laid in a room and even hanging it on the wall made it part of a special collection. Just this Silver Moon Wolf King's fur alone was worth about 50,000 gold coins. It's natural to carry it back. Let's go home, said Dong Bo Shuang, smiling. And, let's go home. Zong Ling was also happy. The benefits gained from coming to the mountain range of desolation were tremendous. Bent Blade Union their main nest was hidden quite well within the inner belly of a giant mountain. It was actually only 100 kilometers from the outer mountain too. One year, I heard that the Luo family did not hand out the money this time. Two fierce-looking bandits were on a mountain peak beside their main nest, hiding in the weeds, alertly scouting, as they chatted. The Luo family said that they will only pay half the money. Either the fish dies or the net splits said the one dot eared thin man beside. From what I see, that Luo family was pressed too hard and is running out of money. It's not about the date, but the person. The boss said that not even a single copper coin should be missing. If he dares to not hand out the money. The next time we go to the Luo family's territory, there will be a ruthless slaughter. They will know true fear after we destroy a few villages. These damned nobles won't shed tears before they see their coffins, cursed the one dot eared bandit in a low voice full of determination. Look, there's someone there. Ha, huh, someone actually dares to enter the desolate mountain range. The two bandits responsible for scouting were shocked. 
There were more than ten bandits designated to scouting the surroundings of the main nest, but actually, their main worry was the demon beasts. As for humans. It's already been a long, long time since any human has fought their way to this main nest. As for a sweep out from the human army troops. They have some friends in the army. The moment there's any huge movement from the army troops, they would have already left the mountain long before then, and stayed along the borders of the mountain. Quick, look. Isn't that a six-dot-armed demon serpent? The six-dot-armed demon serpent of the Shuang territory, Zone Ling. The one-dot-eared valiant bandit recognized him on sight, this six-dot-armed demon serpent was the expert that didn't die after fighting their own leader. The fur that the young man beside him was carrying is really beautiful. It's much more beautiful than any common silver wolves I've seen. And that fur is so huge. It's probably the Silver Moon Wolf Kings. The two valiant bandits looked at each other. The fur of the Silver Moon Wolf King. That's about 50,000 gold coins. If one were to sell the entire Shuang territory, it would be about this price. Such a beautiful snow white wolf fur, so white, so big, so glossy. It must be that of the Silver Moon Wolf King. It must be. One ear, hurry back and report this to the boss. I will observe them. The two bandits were so excited, they were drooling. This was absolutely a big win. But whether or not they would steal the Silver Wolf King fur was not decided by them, but rather their leader. Chapter 22 Hell has no entrance, you entered yourself you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 22 Hell has no entrance, you entered yourself translator. Radiant editor. Radiant inside of the bandit's nest within the mountains. The tiles on the floor were flat and smooth. Bandits of different ranks all lived in their respective areas. Master, here, try this one. Master, try mine, mine are tastier. Five seductive girls surrounded a man whose bare chest was covered with thick, rough hair. They all grabbed different types of fruits and started feeding them to him. This bare-dot-chested man was the head of the Bent Blade Union and was the strongest bandit in the entire water rights town. Bent Blade, Gubin. These scared, pitiful girls had been kidnapped by this bandit leader. If they made him the slightest bit unhappy, he would torture them to death. This fear drove them to do whatever they could to please him. Fuck his mother, back then I could enjoy delicious food every single day, and I was surrounded by countless beauties. Now I can only hide in this mountain and be served by these cheap be asterisk cheese. Gubin's eyes were filled with an evil aura. Now that he had become an outlaw, he could only hide his anger deep in his heart. This life was uncomfortable. Was there any normal human being that would want to hide in the mountain range of desolation? It was a place where even food and drink needed to be brought in from the outside, and where one could come face dot to dot face with a magical beast at any given moment. These cheap, kidnapped be asterisk cheese by his side were barely tolerable, but they were incomparable to the women from his past when he was a meteor knight, people would flatter him constantly, and he could pick up countless pretty girls any time he wanted. I'll have to save up a lot of money to get the Empire to cancel that arrest warrant, Gaibin mused, his eyes showing a fierce spark. That sure family sure has a big appetite. They want me to pay at least 20,000 gold coins to cancel the arrest warrant, damn them. The sure family controlled almost everything in Azure River County, so cancelling an arrest warrant was not difficult for them. I'll just have to work hard for another 10 years. I should have the money by then. I will be free again. Gubin thirsted for his freedom. He had only realized how priceless freedom really was upon becoming a wanted man. Head, head, head. An ear-piercing shout was heard outside. What the fuck are you yelling for? Gubin stood up with a shout, scaring away the seductive girls. They immediately cleared a path for Gubin as he stormed out angrily. Head, head, good news, the loud voice continued saying. It was obvious that the man outside understood the consequences of disturbing his leader. What, 
good news. Gubin opened the door to glare at the man with cruel eyes first, before asking, what kind of good news? The ferocious bandit behaved like an obedient grandson in front of the meteor knight Gubin and said with a smile, it's the fur of the silver moon wolf king. Second leader and the others are all waiting for you. Fur of the silver moon wolf king. Gubin was shocked, and immediately rushed to the meeting hall. The meeting hall. Gubin was sitting in the leader's seat while the rest were positioned around him. The other commanders were all in the heaven realm. Because the Bent Blade Union was the most powerful bandit group in the Water Rites town, it was only natural for it to attract some powerful outlaws into joining it. One ear, tell us what's going on, ordered an old man in a grey robe sitting beside Gubin. I was ordered to scout the perimeter as a precaution. Who would have thought that I would discover two travelers, exclaimed the one-dot-eared bandit. One was the six-dot-armed serpent demon from Shuang territory, Zong Ling, and the other was a young man wearing a black robe and carrying a long spear. He looked to be around sixteen to seventeen years old. He was the one holding the large fur pelt of the Silver Moon Wolf King. Zong Ling. Gubin gently tapped on the chair's arm with his finger, before coldly saying, a young man who is good with a spear in Water Rites Town and is related to Zong Ling. He must be the young lord of Shuang territory who is obsessed with spear training. The spear demon Dong Bo Shuang. The old man in a grey robe nodded. I have also heard of his name, but I had never considered him a threat to us. Being obsessed with practicing the spear to the point of becoming a spear demon doesn't mean he is powerful. However, he unexpectedly has the guts to enter the mountain range of desolation, and he even obtained the fur of a silver moon wolf king. We must not underestimate his power. Brother, shall we rob them a bald and sturdy bandit shouted out. They managed to get the fur of a silver moon wolf king. Don't tell me that Zong Ling has broken through to the meteor rank. Gubin said in low voice. It's very likely. The grey-robed old man nodded his head. Zong Ling has remained in the heaven rank for a long period of time already. There's an extremely high possibility that he has broken through to the media rank. Don't forget that he is a six-dot-armed serpent demon from the royal family of serpents. If he attacked furiously with six blades, the wolf pack would have been decimated. Together with some specially prepared traps, it is possible for them to have captured and killed the Silver Moon Wolf King with ease. Dong Bo Shuang was capable of dealing with group attacks, but the meteor dot ranked Zong Ling who had a tail and six arms would also be highly proficient in dealing with group attacks. Is it possible that the young lord of Shuang territory has reached the meteor rank as well? The bald bandit shouted again. How is that possible? How old is he? Even if he became a knight at the age of seven or eight, there would still be no way for him to surpass the strength of a heaven knight right now. The bald bandit scratched his head with a laugh and said, I think too much. Gubin coldly said, it is very likely that Zong Ling has become a meteor knight, and as for that young lord, he should be a heaven knight at most. Even if he is also a meteor knight, that would only make two meteor knights, we still outnumber them. Besides, this is our territory, so we have the advantage in killing both of them. That's only the worst dot case scenario. I don't think it is possible for the young man to be a meteor knight, the man in the grey robe said. Our chances for success are high. All right then, we shall kill them both and rob them of the silver moon wolf king fur. A large smile emerged on Gubin's face. Since that young man is a lord, he should also be carrying some valuable treasures on him. Let's steal them blind. Rob them. Kill them. The meeting hall was filled with fervent shouts. One ear, where are they now? Gubin asked immediately. They are still far from here and are currently on the path to leave the mountain range. They will definitely have to pass through the canyon in front of us, the one-dot-eared bandit promptly replied. Great, then we shall ambush them in the canyon right in front of us. Second brother, you will arrange this ambush. Gubin gazed at the grey dot-robed old man beside him. 
This robed figure was a heaven rank sorcerer, and his position amongst the bandits was only second to Gobin's. He originally became a wanted man because he had abducted many humans for his experiments. Leave everything to me, the sorcerer said with a nod. Deep within the mountain range. Dot Dong Bo Shuang was carrying the fur of the Silver Moon Wolf King, walking side. By. Side with Uncle Zong. They were paying close attention to their surroundings, but with Dong Bo Shui Ying's current strength, even a fifth rank monster wouldn't be a threat. Hmm. While walking into the wide open canyon, Dong Bo Shui Ying frowned and said, Uncle Zong, stop. What's wrong? Zong Ling was startled. I feel like something isn't right. Shui Ying said as he looked at the path in front of them. After raising his spear techniques to a near dot godly level and becoming a great spear master, Shuang had also begun to sense the qi around him. All of the paths they took before were filled with natural qi, but the qi in the canyon that lay ahead was clearly mixed with an unnatural and ferocious qi. There might be an ambush in front. Let's turn back, Shuang said. Let's see if they will show themselves. When Dong Bo Shuang and Zong Ling turned around to immediately walk the path that they had come from. Six dot armed serpent demon Zong Ling, since you took the effort to come here, stay a while, don't just leave. A cold voice resounded in the canyon. My brothers, show yourselves, they have discovered us. Ha! Huh. Dong Bo Shuang and Zong Ling immediately observed a large number of hidden bandits reveal themselves on the mountain walls. If counted carefully, there were nearly a thousand of them, and all of the bandits were staring at Dong Bo Shuang and Zong Ling as if they were looking at two fat sheep. Bang! A group of people walked out from the canyon in front of them. At the head of his subordinates was a ferocious looking man with two knives at his waist. Gubin. A cold gleam emerged in Zong Ling's eyes. Ha ha ha. Zong Ling, oh Zong Ling. There's no entrance to hell, but you jumped in it by yourself. Gubin laughed grimly. Even though you have become a meteor knight, now that you have entered my territory, you'll definitely meet your demise. Huh, I couldn't touch you when you were hiding in the Shuang territory, but you came here by yourself. Are you seeking death? I will grant you your wish. Oh, as for that tender dot skinned young lord, don't worry, I will let you die quickly. You won't feel any pain at all. Chapter 23 Killer, Dong Bo Shuang You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Chapter 23 Killer, Dong Bo Shuang Translator Radiant Editor Radiant Gubin commanded his subordinates to advance, while the bandits in the surrounding canyon ridges glared like tigers watching their prey. We must escape quickly. Zong Ling urged. Shuang and Zong Ling turned and fled without the slightest hesitation. Trying to escape. Chase them down. Gubin coldly shouted. Damn it. How did they discover us? If they had continued just a bit further, they would have fallen prey to our trap. The bandits were both annoyed and furious. They had never expected that the six-dot-armed serpent demon, Zong Ling, and the juvenile territory lord would discover them from afar. After all, if the bandits were not confident in their concealment skills, they wouldn't have survived in the mountain range of desolation until this day. Chase them. Gubin snarled as he grinded his teeth. Shuang and Zong Ling purposefully fled, provoking the bandits on the two surrounding ridges into utilizing their gigantic crossbows. Wang. Over ten crossbows fired hunting nets towards Shuang and Zong Ling in unison. Hu, hu, hu. The spheres exploded in midair, transforming into expansive hunting nets that surrounded the pair. Avoid them. Shuang and Zong Ling rapidly evaded the hunting nets. This was another reason they had fled. Even with their ferocious strength, it would have been a great inconvenience if either were entangled in the nets. Fortunately, they didn't fall into this ambush and had avoided being surrounded. With the large distance between them and the bandits, as well as the duo's strength, it was easy for Shuang and Zong Ling to dodge. 
they're simply too agile. It's impossible to stop them. All twelve hunting nets caught nothing but air, causing Gu Bin's teeth to itch as he chased. Uncle Zong, we've fled for nearly five hundred meters already. This should be enough. There shouldn't be any more ambushes. Shuang stopped and turned around before he laid down the silver moon wolf king fur. Ah, continue fleeing, flee. There is a magical beast horde ahead. I'd like to see how long you can continue fleeing. Gu Bin's group of deadly bandits were closing in. Shuang grasped the flying snow god spear that was thrust into the ground off to the side and grinned at his pursuers. Gu Bin, you raided my territory six years ago and massacred over 500 civilians from my territory as well as from the water rights town. There were also an unknown number of your members from your bent blade union that had perished. Today, I will settle your debts. While Shuang spoke, Gu Bin and his bandit subordinates were rapidly closing in. Settling my debts. Gu Bin said with an evil grin. There are too many people who wish to kill me, but in the end, they were all killed by my hands. The grey dot robed elder behind Gu Bin gripped his staff and began chanting. Shuang had been paying attention to this whole group of bandits, but he mainly focused on this grey dot robed elder. He had known since long ago that there was a heaven-ranked mage within the ranks of the Bent Blade Union. Allowing the mage to cast his magics would be foolish. Correct, I'll settle your debts, the countless blood debts that you owe. Two short spears appeared from his weapon's sack. Go, go. A faint, blood-dot-red aura arose from Shui Ying's body as he threw the two spears like they were bolts of lightning with his right arm. He had always practiced spear throwing with his right arm, and in order to ensure his success, he had also released the power of his primordial bloodline. Xiu. Xiu. The two short spears created a dreadful whistling sound as they tore through the air. They streaked across a distance of 100 meters to materialize in front of the gray dot robed elder. Too fast. All of the bandits' eyes popped out in alarm when they saw the spear's speed. Be careful. Greatly alarmed, Gu Bin's blade appeared instantly. A shining bent blade was raised in front of the gray dot robed elder. Pang. Gu Bin felt a formidable force flow forth and his arm experienced a burst of acute pain. The short spear was barely affected as it ricocheted and shot at a trio of bandits off to the side. Pu, Pu. Three corpses were left in the path of the spear each with an enormous bloody hole in their chest. Pooh! The grey dot robed elder's eyes were filled with fear. Although the first short spear had been blocked by the big boss, the second spear arrived. A layer of black fog immediately appeared from his body, but Shui Ying's strength had already reached the realm of a silver moon knight when he released the power of his primordial bloodline. This black fog was absolutely unable to defend against this frightening spear. In a flash, the spear had pierced through the elder's chest. The fog dissipated, revealing the grey dot robed elder's wide eyes as his stomach showed a bloody hole as large as a bowl. A heaven-ranked mage had been killed. Scum, you can all go to hell for me. Shuang was merciless against these bandits that reeked of death. He snatched another short spear from his weapon's sack and imbued it with his primordial bloodline's power. A great master at the realm of power perfectly as one had exquisite control over his body's powers, allowing him to display great might with the short spear. Xiu. Every single spear he threw had a terrifying speed, creating hole after hole as they pierced through the bandits. On either side of the bandits were only the canyon stone walls. Even if they wanted to conceal themselves, they wouldn't be able to find a place to hide. Poo. A large, bald man held onto his shield in a desperate attempt to ward off the spear, but the shield was shattered into pieces with a loud bang. The spear tore apart his body before continuing on and penetrating the bandit behind him. Xiu. 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 The spear was the invitation of the death god, and the air was rent apart by its oppression. The group of bandits plummeted into fear and panic. 
The width of the canyon limited the number of pursuing bandits to around a thousand, leaving rows upon rows of them to stand there and wait for the impending spears. Each throw would create a huge skewer kebab, and their lives would cease to be. Who wouldn't be scared? So powerful. How could this be? Gubin held on to his bent blade, doing his utmost to resist. Two spears shot towards him consecutively, forcing him to risk his old life to deflect both. The two deflected spears killed many bandits by his side once again. It turns out that the most terrifying one isn't the six-dot-armed serpent demon Zongling, but that young territory lord. Gubin glared at the black-clothed youngster who was continuously throwing short spears. Gubin had barely survived those two spears, he couldn't possibly kill Shuang, so he decided to abandon any attempts on him for now. On the other hand, those heaven-ranked bandits continued to be massacred. Due to their close quarters, each spear destroyed rows upon rows of bandits, resulting in kebabs of six to seven corpses. Time seemed endless in this battlefield of death. In reality, Shuang possessed only twelve short spears in total, and with his throwing speed, they were soon depleted. Even when the short spears stopped coming, the bandits were still frightened to the point of inaction. They could only blankly look around them. The second boss had died, the third boss had died, the fourth boss had died. Aside from the chief boss Gubin, all of their other powerful experts had died. Not a single heaven-ranked bandit was left, and more than half of the earth-ranked bandits had perished. The most important bandits, who were Gubin's followers, had all met the short spears attacks. These heaven and earth ranked bandits were the first to suffer the onslaught of spears and to die the most miserable deaths. BVEC, boss. All of the bandits looked towards Gubin. Gubin could only grind his teeth to the point of bleeding, however, as he watched the black clothed youngster in the distance. He had never expected the backbone of his bent blade union to be annihilated by an onslaught of thrown spears. Dong Bo Shuang. Gubin roared. I have come to the mountain range of desolation to eradicate your bent blade union. The soaring, blood.red aura emanating from the distant black.clothed youngster began to dissipate. The strength needed to release his primordial bloodline was very demanding, after all. He picked up the spear beside him that was stuck in the ground. Whoosh! Shuang turned into a blur as he dashed forth. So fast, the bandits exclaimed in shock. Kill him with me. Kill! Gubin roared with madness, and a faint layer of black do chi appeared on his body. Wielding two bent blades, Gubin dashed forwards in a blur and raced towards his enemy. All together now. Kill him. All of the the bandits followed their boss's lead. Some took out bows and arrows, some prepared their concealed weapons, while others licked the blood off their blades. They were intimidated by the spears thrown before, but in a close quarters battle, what could a thousand people fear? Furthermore, Boss Gubin was leading the charge. Die for me. Gubin had long since reached the pinnacle of the meteor rank. He was an extremely experienced elder. Who? He marched on like a demon. They approached Shuang in a flash, arcing around him to close the distance. The spear was a long weapon. If Gubin could engage in close quarters combat, then his chance of victory would increase several fold. Humph. Shuang let out a cold snort before his spear suddenly shot forward like an arrow. Dang dang dang. Shadows of the spear, fast as lightning, could be seen amidst the fluttering snowflakes. This was the first level of the mysterious ice spear technique, floating snow. Fast. Additionally, the long range of his swinging spear didn't allow Gubin any time to deal with it. Shuang was fast before, but the current him was even faster. Gubin could only wave his bent blades, relying on pure instinct to block five attacks in a row. His body couldn't endure the recoil, every single spear attack caused him to feel the threat of death. Gubin prepared himself to defend at all times. Faced with such a terrifying spear, there was no time to think. He could only rely on his intuition. 
After those five attacks, Xuang flexed his core and swept out with his spear. Gu Bin's two blades immediately intercepted the shaft of the spear. Pine. When the blades and shaft collided, a frightening impact was transmitted to Gu Bin's body. Gu Bin's expression changed as he lost control of his body and was sent flying. He hit the canyon wall before lying limply like a sandbag. A mouthful of blood came spraying out of his mouth. He managed to hold on to his two blades, but the impact left him so dazed, he could only feel a cold ray speeding towards him. Pooh! As fast as lightning, a spear pierced Gubin's throat and into the mountain wall, nailing him in place with his feet hanging about half a meter above the ground. Gubin stared with open eyes that were filled with shock as he gazed upon the grim, black dot clothed youngster in front of him. He had never expected that he, Gubin, having been unhindered for so many years, would actually die at the hands of a youth. Gugu blood overflowed from his mouth, and the light in his eyes turned dull. The number one bandit of the water rights town, Bent Blade, Gu Bin, had perished. The Killer Dong Bo Shuang Chapter 24 Fear you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 24 Fear Translator Radiant Editor Radiant the bandits, who had planned on encircling Shuang and killing him with their leader's help, were all shocked and stunned after chasing over. How did their leader die just like that? They had only exchanged a few moves, yet he had died way too quickly. Pooh! Shuang pulled his spear out and turned his eyes towards the bandits, whose hands were stained with blood. Quickly, run! Run! The bandits were all terrified. None of them were heaven rank knights, and even their leader Gobin could kill them all single dot handedly, not to mention this young lord who was even more powerful than Gobin. Trash, you still want to escape. Shuang swiftly dashed towards the bandits. Snowflakes flew and blood splashed as he slaughtered the bandits like they had the citizens of Water Rights Town. These bandits were mere fodder in the face of Shui Ying's spear. The remaining three earth knights were killed in merely two breaths. Bandits everywhere were sent flying, and they collapsed onto the ground as corpses. Run, run fast. The bandits were extremely terrified, their strength just couldn't compare with Shui Ying's, whose spear emitted a powerful aura. Even the smallest touch could end their lives, let alone one of Shui Ying's powerful strikes. Die. Die. Shuang showed no mercy towards the bandits of the Bent Blade Union, annihilating every one of them within his reach. As he killed them, they scattered in all directions. He knew full well that by himself, he could not exterminate them completely. However, for the sake of eliminating this disease that had plagued Water Rights Town for years, he would aim to kill the strongest amongst them. He would kill all who were at the knight rank without exception. It wasn't long before the bandits had escaped in different directions, but over 200 corpses remained on the ground. The leaders of the Bent Blade Union, their Heaven Knights, their Earth Knights, all of the core members of the Union had perished. From then on, the Bent Blade Union was no more. As for the rest of the bandits, the village guards should be able to handle them. Spare my life, spare me. There were five bandits cornered on the mountain wall by Zong Ling. They didn't dare to move even an inch, because those who moved would die. Shuang, Zong Ling said, laughing out loud. This is great. The biggest threat to Water Rights Town is now gone forever. I've searched the bodies of Gu Bin and the others, and there are quite a number of treasures on them, especially on Gu Bin's body. I even found a magical storage item. Shuang was surprised. Gubin owned a magical storage item. This bandit is actually so rich, Shuang said as he walked toward Zong Ling here. Zong Ling handed over a package, and inside the package were some gold notes issued by the Empire's bank. It was obvious that Gubin had been afraid of the possibility of his group's extermination, so he had carried all his money and treasures on him at all times. Besides the money, there was a ring inside the package, too. Shuang picked up the ring and probed it immediately. 
his qi flowed into the ring through his finger, cleansing the inner circles of the rings and binding the ring to himself. A knight or a mage could use their qi or magic power to bind a magical storage item, though if it were a normal person, they would need a mage to bind it with their blood. Good stuff. Shuang was surprised by the ring's contents. It contained a large amount of gold notes, coins and weapons, though the storage space was much smaller than the magic storage pendant his mother had given him. It was merely two-thirds of a meter in radius. So many gold notes. Shuang could sense everything inside the magical storage ring. Each gold note was worth 85,000 gold coins. There were also some smaller items that were worth up to 90,000 gold coins. The rest of the bandits' belongings were worth another 20,000 gold coins. Bandits are incredibly rich. Shuang thought to himself. The five of you. Shuang looked at the terrified bandits. Lead the way to your base camp. If you lead me there correctly, I will spare your lives. But if you lead me wrongly, all of you will die. Yes, yes, yes. Rest assured, my lord, we will definitely lead you down the correct path, the five bandits replied immediately. The terrified bandits anxiously led the way. Shuang and Zong Ling trailed behind them. Uncle Zong, here. Shuang handed the magical storage ring over to Zong Ling. No way, you are the one who destroyed the Bent Blade Union. All of these treasures belong to you. Zong Ling said, rejecting the item. My mother gave me a magical storage pendant, I don't need this one, Shuang said with a laugh. But you can keep it for Qingxi. One day he will become a mage, and a mage will need a magical storage item, Zong Ling said as he shook his head. Shuang shook his head and said, it's too early, and Qingxi will still need a few more years to become a true mage. And when that time comes, I will give him a better one. Uncle Zong, don't forget, we've made a huge profit this time. Zong Ling was startled, but then he smiled. That's right. Not only did they have a shadow leopard corpse, they also had the hide of a silver moon wolf king. That alone was worth tens of thousands of gold coins. If they included the gold coins they acquired by destroying the Bent Blade Union, then they really had earned a fortune. All right. Without saying another word, Zong Ling took the ring and bound it. Hmm. Zong Ling was surprised. He discovered the huge amount of gold notes and gold coins in the ring, with the gold notes alone worth more than 50,000 gold coins. These are for the expenses of the Shuang territory. You can keep those gold coins and spend them. Just tell me when you need more, Shuang told Zong Ling, I will find a chance to sell the Silver Moon Wolf King's skin and the Shadow Leopard Corpse when we return. The Shadow Leopard Corpse was stored in the magical storage pendant. Such magical storage space contained no air, and was therefore ideal for storing items for a long period of time. N. As Zong Ling nodded his head, he thought to himself that as Shui Ying's strength continued to increase, the expenses of the Shui Ying territory would gradually increase as well. Not long after they started walking. My lord, we will soon reach our destination, the five bandits said respectfully. One of the skinny bandits went on to say, our base camp is inside the mountain. It's impossible to discover from the front. It is only accessible through extremely secretive passages that lead into the camp directly. Lead the way. Shuang brandished his spear and acted cautiously. The five bandits walked forward, but Shuang could sense a frightening threat ahead of him. It was as if something horrible was hiding inside the mountain right in front of him. After reaching the realm of great spear master and raising his spear skills to a nearly divine level, Shuang's senses had grown much stronger. Just like how he had discovered the bandits before their ambush, something ahead of him now filled him with terror. What's happening? I can't sense any chi ahead of me, but I just can't suppress my fear. Shuang felt terrified. He abruptly stopped before extending his hand to block Uncle Zong, who was still walking. He gazed at the moss dot covered mountain in front of him. Shuang, what's wrong? 
Zong Ling asked with a puzzled expression. Something is not right, I have a bad feeling, Shuang whispered. Let's go. Let's leave here quickly. Zong Ling's expression changed, he didn't doubt Shui Ying's words. Whoosh! Both of them quickly turned around and left immediately. My lord, the passage leading to the camp is hidden behind these stones. My lord! Ah, where are they? The five bandits turned around and discovered that Shui Ying and Zong Ling, who were behind them, had disappeared. Gone, the young lord of Shui Ying territory is gone. My brothers, the Bent Blade Union is no more. Hurry up, find some treasures and run for your lives. These bandits were cunning, so they immediately went into the camp. Who? This mountain that had stood unchanged for more than a thousand years now formed a protruding face that appeared on the mountain wall with the rocks forming eyebrows, eyes, a mouth. The proud eyes gazed at Shuang and Zong Ling, who were already a few kilometers away. The large face revealed a puzzled expression. Eh. He can sense my presence. He's so strong at such a young age, perhaps there are some strong human experts backing him up. I have to change my location to watch that human. The enormous face on the mountain wall disappeared, and the mountain reverted to its original appearance. Bang. Deep underground, a massive figure had started moving. Outside the mountain range of desolation, the base camp. Shuang and Zong Ling had fled the mountain range at full speed and arrived at the base camp. Finally, we're out. Shuang turned around to look at where they had come from, still terrified. Chapter 25 Intelligence Report You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 25 Intelligence Report Translator Radiant Editor Radiant, Shuang, what have you discovered? Although Zong Ling believed Shuang, he was still clueless of what had happened. I don't know either. Shuang shook his head, it's just that I had this feeling that if we continued heading there, we might die. The Bent Blade Union's hideout was already on the mountain for so many years, and nothing has ever happened, has it? Zong Ling doubted. I don't know about that. Shuang laughed. Who cares about that? We've already completed our goal, Uncle Zong. Let's head home now. Yeah, let's head home. Zong Ling also smiled happily. The two of them walked towards the camp side by side. About 100 soldiers of the Shuang territory were stationed in the camp. My lord. My lord, some of the soldiers, who were patrolling inside the camp, greeted respectfully. Soon after, the captain of the troops, Captain Yang Cheng, came to welcome them. Captain Yang Cheng welcomed them with a surprised voice, Lord Shuang, Lord Zong Ling, you're back early today, did something happen? Normally you would be back when the sky has darkened, but it's still a long time till sundown. Shuang smiled. This morning, they went into the mountain range of desolation to kill the pack Silver Moon Wolves. After killing the Wolf King they headed back, only to be stopped shortly by the Bent Blade Union, it was still 1.2 hours till dusk. Captain Yang Cheng, Shuang said, Uncle Zong and I plan to head out now and rush back to the Shuang territory. But you should continue to camp here for another day before heading back tomorrow. Return to the Shuang territory. Captain Yang Cheng displayed a happy expression. Camping every day in the bitter cold. How could that be compared to the safety and warmth of a fortress? Right. Zong Ling said, the Lord and I will go back first so you need to lead the soldiers well. Be at ease Lord Zong Ling. Captain Yang Ching promised while patting his chest. Shortly after. Shuang and Zong Ling, both riding a frost pegasus started heading to the Shuang territory. The frost pegasus all had extraordinary stamina. Even though the Silver Moon Wolf King's fur was nearly a thousand kilograms, the Frost Pegasi were able to maintain a very fast pace the whole time. Whenever the Pegasus was tired out, Shuang and Zong Ling would swap Pegasi and let it rest. The sky had already darkened. They pressed onwards in the freezing cold. 
two frost pegasi turned into gusts of wind as they galloped onwards to the territory. We will arrive soon. Shuang could see a majestic mountain from afar, that was the snow rock mountain that was named after himself and his little brother. We are finally back. Zong Ling revealed a smile. Right now, it should be about the time for Qin Shi to be having his dinner. Shuang was delighted. He had achieved his goal for going to the mountain range of desolation, and his gains were better than what he had initially expected. At least, the matter regarding his little brother's master shouldn't be a problem anymore. Two frost pegasi were galloping on the mountain path. Along the mountain path, they continually dashed upwards. My lord! The guards at the outpost, instantly recognized their own territory lord and lord Zongling at a glance so they were extremely respectful. There were no hindrances along the way, so they dashed directly towards the castle entrance. Open the gate! Shuang shouted while riding on his pegasus. Ah, of course, my lord! The patrolling guards immediately recognized him and shouted, Quick, hurry up and let down the drawbridge, and open the castle gate. Young Master Qing Shi, Young Master Qing Shi, the Lord has returned, the Lord has returned. The servants in the castle shouted while speeding ahead to report. Hong Long Long the castle's drawbridge was let down, and the castle gate was pushed open by the soldiers. As the castle gate opened, Shuang looked ahead while on his pegasus and immediately saw a body wearing thick clothes that resembled a little bear running cheerfully towards him from afar. Brother. Qing Shi's excited eyes brightened. Ha ha. Shuang came down from the pegasus and handed it to a soldier stood beside him. He immediately began to smile widely, watching Qing Shi dash towards him before sweeping Qing Shi up and carrying his little brother in his arms. Although he was carrying the thousand kilogram wolf king fur on his back, Shui Ying's arms could easily withstand thousands of kilos, so how easy would it be to carry his brother? Big brother, you said you would return in ten days to half a month, but it's been eighteen days. Qing Shi said. After calculating the time he was traveling, it was indeed eighteen days. I was delayed. Have you eaten dinner? Shui Ying asked. I was going to, but then I heard that big brother came back. Qing Shi was excited, and his eyes lit up, Big brother, what are you carrying on your back? It's very beautiful. So white, so soft. He even reached out his hand to touch it. This fur hasn't been cleaned yet, wait until I clean it. Then I'll let you play with it. Shuang said, let's go and eat dinner. Carrying his little brother, he walked into the castle. At this moment, another person appeared at the castle's entrance, the mighty and robust lion man Tong San. Tong San was grinning and chuckling right now, because he was really really happy. Seeing Zong Ling and Shui Ying's return, and even the gigantic silver wolf king's fur, he understood something. This was definitely a major success. With his many years of experience from adventuring, he could tell that it was definitely the Silver Wolf King's fur with only one glance. A common wolf would never possess such a huge pelt. Nor would it be so beautiful. Uncle Zong, Uncle Tong, let's go eat, said Dong Bo Shuang. Let's go, together. Tong San and Zong Ling were both laughing. Noel Daren, Roar Big Bro is back. Big Bro is back while being carried by Shuang. Little Qing Shi was happily cheering. On the other hand, the Bent Blade Union's backbone was exterminated entirely, and the remaining small fry would of course pack up some of their main nest's treasures and started to escape. Once they escaped, the message the Bent Blade Union was eradicated by the young lord of Shuang territory spread out swiftly, like a gust of wind. Deep into the night. Ishue City, Long San Lu. Lord Sian. The white-haired old man quietly stood outside a room. A black-haired middle-aged man yawned with his muddled eyes half open. He replied, Ah, you Tuesday. Why have you awakened me in the middle of the night? What's the matter? Lord Sian, a major event has occurred in our water rights town. 
the gray-haired elder said in a low voice. A major event. What major event? Lord Sian asked in doubt. The bent blade union has been wiped out. The gray-haired elder quietly said. Lord Sian gaped. The bent blade union. The largest and most powerful bandit group near water rights. Lead by the powerful meteor knight bent blade Gubin and a group of heaven knights. They were wiped out. This information isn't false. Lord Sian didn't dare to believe this. The bent blade union lead by Gubin. The bent blade union that always slips away when it faces unfavorable situations. They were wiped out. Yes. The bent blade union lead by Gubin. The gray haired elder nodded. Gubin himself was killed too. All of the Heaven Knights and even the majority of the average knights plus a mage were all killed without exception. Furthermore, they were all wiped out by one person. Who? Lord Sian asked. They say that it's the Spear Devil, that young territory lord. The gray haired elder answered in a low voice. Dong Bo Shuang. Lord Sian was alarmed. The power of a single person was able to wipe out the entire Bent Blade Union. What kind of strength could he possess? At the very least, he must possess the strength of a Meteor Knight. Perhaps he had even reached the realm of a Silver Moon Knight. Where is the report on Dong Bo Shuang? Lord Sian asked. Right here. The gray-haired elder immediately offered him a file. This information has just begun spreading across the region. Our Dragon Mountain Mansion has already captured the remnants of the Bent Blade Union, we can meet with the Lord tomorrow. Lord Sian looked over the file without a single trace of tiredness. He was incomparably clear-headed now. The information network of the Dragon Mountain Mansion was the largest in the region. The initial reports already had nearly all of the events recorded. If this information is true, then I fear that the number one expert of water rights is now that young territory lord. Lord Sian quietly muttered. I truly don't dare to imagine this. Just how old is he now? That married couple Dong Bo Lai and Mo Yang Yu has given birth to such an extraordinary son. Chapter 26 Black Iron Order of the Dragon Mountain Mansion You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 26 Black Iron Order of the Dragon Mountain Mansion Translator Radiant Editor Radiant early in the morning, the day after. In Water Rights Town, the home of the Great Mage, by Yuan Ji. A bone-chilling northern winter wind blew through an open window into a quiet room. The chill attacked the white-robed and barefooted by Yuan Ji as he sat there calmly cross-legged. Thanks to the cold northern wind, his entire face was left blushing red. Why doesn't it bond at the end? Why did the experimental body collapse? Bai Yuan Ji ceaselessly pondered the issue he encountered the previous night. Suddenly. Teacher, teacher. The lord of the Shuang territory has come to visit. A timid voice called from outside the room. Everyone knew that the great mage didn't like being bothered during his early morning contemplations. Naturally, he disliked being bothered. Disturbances were highly discouraged, but not forbidden. However, aside from catastrophes as expansive and far-reaching as the sky, all other disruptions were absolutely forbidden during his experiments. That young territory lord. Bai Yuan Ji said with a faint and vacant look tinged with doubt. It hadn't been long since the last time Dong Bo Shuang had visited. Could it be that he had already obtained a silver moon wolf king's heart or 50,000 gold coins? Hurry up and invite him inside. Bai Yuan Ji immediately got up and left the quiet room. Heading to the living room to welcome his guest. The great mage Bai Yuan Ji stood in the doorway to his living room and greeted his guest with hospitality. A black clothed youth bearing a weapon box walked over as Bai Yuan Ji restrained his fear inwardly. The aura on this young territory lord was extraordinarily withdrawn. Only by using his spiritual power as a great mage could he sense the terrifying aura that was withdrawn in its entirety. 
Great mage. Xuan smiled. Territory lord, please come in. Bai Yuanji responded courteously. The two individuals sat down. Territory lord, this time you have come for. Bai Yuanji said as he attentively watched Xuang. Please take a look great mage. With a flip of his hand, a small iron box appeared in his palms. The stench of raw meat wafted from within the box, as Xuang handed the box to him. Bai Yuanji could already guess the contents. Trembling with excitement, he reached out and received the box. He gently opened it. Precisely, inside was the heart of a silver moon wolf king. In fact, it was exceptionally fresh. It had only been one day since Xuang had killed the silver moon wolf king. In addition, Xuang stored the heart in his storage pendant. Thus, the heart maintained the peak degree of freshness. The silver moon heart. It feels as if it was harvested merely two hours ago. Bai Yuanji excitedly exclaimed. Between the silver moon heart and 50,000 gold coins, he wished to obtain the silver moon heart much more, since he could only buy some materials with the money. But with this silver moon heart, he could use it as the final component necessary to finish his work of art. Even if he wanted to buy a silver moon wolf king's heart, it was an item that could only be discovered, not sought after. There weren't many people that were willing to go to the mountain range of desolation, in addition to killing a silver moon wolf king. He had long since prepared the other components necessary for his experiment, but in the past eight years despite his efforts and patience, he hadn't been able to get a hold of a silver moon heart at all. It would be far too expensive for him to invite an expert to go to the mountain range of desolation and hunt one for him. Great mage. Xuang started. Bai Yuanji restrained his state of ecstasy and raised his head. I'm relieved that you've delivered the Silver Moon's heart, territory lord. I, Bai Yuanji, will definitely instruct your brother with all my power and receive him as my personal disciple. And when his spiritual power reaches the threshold, I guarantee that he will be able to become a mage. After receiving such a precious treasure, he definitely had to settle things properly. I'll have to trouble great mage to do so. Xuang smiled. When can my little brother come over? Any time is fine. Bai Yuanji answered as he took out a wooden tile. The tile had the word Bai engraved onto it. This is my token. Give this to your brother and he can immediately come over. Shuang nodded. He had never been afraid that this Bai Yuan Ji would be a renegade concerning his promise. It was impossible for Bai Yuan Ji to take this precious treasure and turn his cheek. After all, Shuang was able to deliver him a silver moon's heart in such a short period of time. Thus, it wouldn't be hard for Shuang to assassinate him either. Being able to kill a silver moon wolf king meant that he was able to kill a meteor rank great mage. I'll bring my little brother here after the new year. I'll have to bother you to receive him when the time comes. Shuang took the token and immediately got up to leave. I'll be taking my leave then. Bai Yuanji stood up to deliver Shuang to the door. Bai Yuanji tightly held on to the metal box as he watched Shuang leave and inwardly thought, this juvenile territory lord said that he would deliver the silver moon's heart or 50,000 gold coins within a month, yet he has already delivered it so soon after. The silver moon's heart is also extremely fresh. Clearly, the silver moon wolf king was just recently killed. But who killed it? The Shuang territory shouldn't have such a powerful expert. Zongling and Tong San had risen to fame long ago, but neither of them were able to kill a silver moon wolf king. Could it be that juvenile territory lord? Bai Yuanji guessed. He had met Zong Ling before. Zong Ling was an expert six-dot-armed serpent demon, but he didn't evoke any fear in him. Yet, he was unable to see through that young territory lord. Shuang went to pay his 10,000 gold coin debt for the flying snow god spear, before returning to Shuang territory with his subordinates. Along the path from the castle's main gates, ten soldiers were kneeling down with utmost respect. Big brother, big brother. 
you didn't bring me with you this morning to water rights. Ching Shi called out from behind the railings of the castle's third floor. You were still sleeping when I set out. Whoosh! With a single leap, Shuang reached the third floor and landed beside his younger brother. He took out the token and handed it to Ching Shi. Look here Ching Shi. What do you think this is? Ching Shi was puzzled with the wooden tile. It's a wood tile isn't it? With a, by, character engraved onto it. This is the token of the great mage, by Yuan Ji. You will go and become his personal disciple after the new year. Shuang said. Ah. The great mage is looking to accept a personal disciple. Ha ha ha. Qing Shi was practically shaking his butt back and forth as he said so. Amazing, simply too amazing. But brother, doesn't that mean I won't be able to see you? Qing Shi said reluctantly. Ha ha ha. How far is it from here to water rights? You can come back and visit me anytime, and I can visit you anytime too. Shuang laughed. N. Qing Shi vigorously nodded. He was already looking forward to becoming a mage after devouring all of the books concerning mages that his mother had left behind. In the afternoon of the same day, a flurry of snow floated down from the sky, blanketing the northern provinces of the empire. Snow was a common sight in the north. Shuang watched the gentle snow steadily fall outside as he sat upright in a lotus position. After reaching the realm of a great spear master, he would still spend two hours a day cultivating. However, the only effect of cultivating now was the improvement of his bones and muscles. But in order to improve his spearmanship, this required time, and comprehending the nature of the heavens and the earth. By mastering the nature of the heavens and the earth, he would achieve enlightenment. Master, Master. There's someone outside who calls himself the Lord of Dragon Mountain Mansion. He wishes to visit you. The servant said as he ran over with labored breath. Dragon Mountain Mansion. Shui Ying's eyes lit up. He had heard of the Dragon Mountain Mansion before. It was a very mysterious organization established throughout the empire. The Lord of the Dragon Mountain Mansion's water rights branch wasn't any lower than the Lord of Water Rights Town. Shuang immediately got up and hastened to personally welcome the Lord at the gate. Open the gates and let my guest in. Shuang called out as he arrived at the main castle gates. Led by a black haired middle aged man, a group of people were standing outside of the gates. Beside the middle aged man was a grey haired elder, and behind him, a group of bodyguards who were all heaven rank knights. Ha <laughs> ha. I've long since heard the great name of the spear demon Dong Bo Shuang, but seeing you today has confirmed it. You truly are extraordinary. The middle-aged man said with a smile. I am the lord of the Dragon Mountain Mansion's water rights branch, Xian. Greetings, Lord Xian. Shuang replied politely. Please come inside, Lord Xian. Shuang and Lord Xian walked away shoulder to shoulder leaving everyone else behind. What matter has you trekking all the way here in the snow for, Lord Xian? Shuang asked with a smile. With your strength alone, you were able to wipe out the Bent Blade Union. Could it be that you're still trying to hide such a major matter? You were also bearing a Silver Moon Wolf King's fur as you continuously dashed for over 400 kilometers yesterday. More than a few people witnessed this. Are you also trying to hide the fact that you killed a Silver Moon Wolf King? Lord Xian smiled as he asked in turn. Shuang was inwardly startled. Yesterday's matter was already completely known by Lord Xian in less than a day. The Dragon Mountain Mansion really was formidable. Naturally I came today to deliver the reward for killing the major criminal, Gu Bin. The second matter is even more important. It's to deliver the Black Iron Order of my Dragon Mountain Mansion. Lord Cian replied. The Black Iron Order. His heart trembled as he repeated those words. He had been waiting for this day. He had already waited for far too long. Chapter 27 
Bloodshed Tavern and Dragon Mountain Mansion you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 27 Bloodshed Tavern and Dragon Mountain Mansion Translator Radiant Editor Radiant under a pavilion, along the corridor within the castle. Both Shuang and Lord Si and settled down facing each other. Servants constantly served snacks and hot tea. Zong Ling, Tong San, Yu Tu and others waited just outside the corridor. Savoring the hot tea in his hands, Lord Sian gazed at the snowy blizzard that raged outside. My lord, you live in such a wonderful place. Unlike the city, which is plagued with noisy crowds who can be heard even in the wee hours of the night, your place is both tranquil and without restrictions. Lord Sian chuckled, after I retire, I will look for such a peaceful place to relax in. Shuang smiled, there are many who desire your high status that would normally be out their reach. High status. I am just a person in charge of a Dragon Mountain mansion in a small town, yet you are speaking of high status. Lord Sian replied before presenting a small stack of gold, here is 800 gold. Although the bounty for Gubin is not much, I still want you to have it. Shuang took it from him. Prisoners of the Empire. Generally gold bounties would be reserved for star-ranked criminals or for those who had committed heinous crimes. Average bandits were not eligible for such handsome rewards. This is the Black Iron Order. Sian presented yet another item, a black token, with the two words, Dragon Mountain, carved on it, every citizen who has the strength of a meteor knight will receive this token. Strength of a Meteor Knight Black Iron Order Shuang appeared to be preoccupied by his thoughts. There are two types of tokens. Sian continued, there is the Black Iron Order, and the Bronze Order. Those who have the strength of a Meteor Knight can obtain the Iron Order, while only those who possess the remarkable strength can obtain the Bronze Order. Those of higher strength would be a Transcendent Knight. Transcendence make up the entirety of our Xia clans and the Empire's strength. But of course, Transcendence live in an entirely different world, it's useless to talk of them now. Take this Black Iron Order, it belongs solely to you, and it can be used for many purposes. Sian placed the token before Shuang. Shuang took a closer look. Other than the words, Dragon Mountain, there were complex line designs that seemed to naturally cross and combine with expert coordination. It was a beautiful sight. Sian waved his hand, and a small stack of papers were brought forth. This is the Dragon Mountain Mansion's imperial report, it records the general events in the Empire, and provides detailed information about happenings in the Azure River County. For example, you killed a Silver Moon Wolf King and single-handedly annihilated the entire Bent Blade Union. Your deeds will be recorded in the next report, and all those strong individuals who are in possession of this report will be able to see what you have done. Oh. Shuang flipped through the report he received. The report had over ten pages, the first page detailed the important incidents that occurred outside the Azure River County. The rest recorded all the events that passed within. Dragon Mountain Calendar, Year 9623, November 19, Azure River County The 5th Division entered the mountain range of desolation. On the third day, they encountered a rank 6 magical beast, Darkness Demon Bear, which awakened from its deep slumber. 2,000 soldiers perished from this destructive foe. Dragon Mountain Calendar, Year 9623, November 10, Azure River County a transcendent level knight appeared in Serene Sky City. He appeared to as a barefooted old man with white hair who was deranged and in tattered clothing. November 5th, the marriage between Si family and Zhang family. The Imperial Report recorded all the important events and messages of all the districts in Azure River County. It even contained urgent official information, and included the dates of each event. As for the anecdotes from the districts, the documentation was less restrictive. Shuang was awed by the report, realizing that there were many things happening within the thousand miles of the Azure River County. Lord Sian, there is actually a transcendent in Serene Sky City. Shuang asked curiously. And he disappeared without a trace after that. 
Lord Sian mused, those transcendents are of extremely high status. The things they wish for and desire are different from the rest of us. For them, traveling throughout the world is a normal thing. It is recorded in the report to notify all the clans, so that they do not accidentally offend a transcendent. Disaster will surely follow if one is offended. An entire tribe might cease to exist. Shuang nodded. That's right. Street beggars were always randomly bullied, but according to this notice, any beggar could turn out to be a transcendent knight. Who would not be cautious? The existence of a transcendent is extremely rare, within the entire empire's 19 provinces, there are just a few of them. Take a look at our Azure River County, while our county is quite big, it has yet to produce a single transcendent. Lord Sian shook his head in woe, the Imperial Report is published every month and you should read it when you have to time in order to gain an understanding of the current events within the empire, be they big or small. In this edition, the report also serves as a warning to be mindful of individuals that should not be offended. The newspaper is just for pleasure. The following items I am going to give you are gradually getting more important. The second most important items are these two books. Lord C. N.'s expression turned stern as he swiftly presented two sealed books, one canvassed in black with the two words, Dragon Mountain, on the cover. The other had a red cover and a drawing of a dagger dripping with crimson blood imprinted on it. These books are. Shuang inquired curiously as he stared at them. This one is the Dragon Mountain book, and is recorded by our very own Dragon Mountain Mansion. While the other is the Bloodshed book, written by the Bloodshed Tavern. Lord Sian replied. Shuang retrieved the two thick books. Shuang flipped open the Black Dragon Mountain book, within it was a long list of names in descending order based on rankings, with a brief introduction of each person next to their name. The Bloodshed Book is a book of murderers. Lord C. N.'s words made Shuang gasp in surprise. Book of Murderers. Shuang glanced at the Scarlet Book at his side. Yes, the history of the Bloodshed Tavern is shrouded with mystery, so much so that the Dragon Mountain Mansion dares not to provoke them. Every city throughout the Empire, contains at least one Bloodshed Tavern. Lord Sian continued, according to their number of kills, the Bloodshed Tavern was able to fill this book with the nicknames of many killers. After all, killers usually like to maintain their anonymity. The other Dragon Mountain book is more authoritative and is viewed as a matter of great importance to all the powers within the Empire. A proud expression was plastered on Lord C.N.'s face, the Dragon Mountain book is our very own recording of the top 3000 Bronze Order powers throughout the entirety of the Empire's 19 provinces. Lord C.N. continued, from 1st to the 3000th, every power has been ranked through severe and careful consideration in accordance to their fighting strength and further detailed evaluation aspects. The entire Empire's 3000 Strongest Powers Xue Ying's eyes gleamed with interest. Bronze Order Only those with recognized fighting strength were eligible to obtain the Bronze Order. Here was a document containing the top 3,000 powers. Due to the scarce number of transcendents in the Empire, there is no record of their rankings. Lord Sian explained, those a step away from the transcendent rank are proclaimed to be supreme, and many are impressive enough to be compared to actual transcendents. In the entire empire, there are countless individuals who possess such strength. The entire Azure River County has a total of 12 Bronze Order powers. And only 5 are recorded within the Dragon Mountain Book. Lord Sian elaborated. Shuang nodded slightly in response, the Dragon Mountain Book had a limitation of 3,000 positions, and not every Bronze Order holder can be included. These 5 powers. Ranked 5th is Chang Qing Zhe with an overall rank of 2895. Ranked fourth is Zhang Yong with an overall rank of 2822. Ranked third is Dan Chen with an overall rank of 1259. Ranked second is Si Liang Hong with an overall rank of 569. Ranked first is Xiang Pan Yun with an overall rank of 525. 
Lord Sian recited the detailed rankings of the five personnel with ease. Chapter 28 Gaining Merit Points for Humanity's Xia Clan You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 28 Gaining Merit Points for Humanity's Xia Clan Translator Radiant Editor Radiant Lord Sian continued, Si Liang Hong is a well.known legend rank mage, who has lived past 500 years. A normal mortal can normally live up to a maximum of 200 years, but the transformation into a blood demon allowed her to increase her longevity. This old hag, who has lived through five centuries, has unfathomable strength. Even the blood demon tower she resides in for practice consists of countless traps that can keep even transcendence out. C Clan, the utmost honorable family tribe of the entire Azure River County. The Prefecture Magistrate of Azure River County, the General of the Army of County City, and even the Lord of several other cities such as Water Rights Town and Windy Town belong to the C Clan. Nearly 80.9% of the county's cities belong to the C Clan. Furthermore, they occupy many prestigious titles and positions throughout Azure River County. In other words, in the Azure River County, the C Clan can easily manipulate situations to their likings. Sian stated calmly. Shuang gasped in surprise, the prefecture magistrate, the general, and several other mayors, so many important positions are taken by the C clan. The entire empire has always been like this. This is the not the world of mortals, but the world of transcendence. Sian proclaimed. See Liang Hong that old witch. While she is not a transcendent, she is just a stone's throw away. Furthermore, with her excellent relationships with many renowned transcendent families, she is able to obtain considerate amount of management power. The management of power is in the grasp of the C clan. In other words, if the C clan deemed you guilty of certain crimes, there is no way out of it even if you are innocent. Likewise, if they deemed you innocent, then even if you are guilty, you wouldn't be guilty anymore. Shuang was still recovering from this shocking news, this, this. Have you already forgotten? Despite being nobles, your parents were captured and taken away from just a decree. Lord Sian continued swiftly. Xue Ying's facial expression sunk gradually. Those who are transcendents are able to send out those decrees. They can even manipulate the law to a certain extent. Lord Sian explained. Does the M.O. Yang clan have any transcendent beings? Shuang pressed on. Saving his parents was a wish that he had been pursuing for years. They have one transcendent being, but he is a pseudo-transcendent. Lord Sian replied, those types of pseudo-transcendents are the weakest amongst all the transcendents. I am afraid Si Liang Hong, that old witch, and Xiang Pan Yun, that deranged figure, have potential on par to that of the M.O. Yang clan's transcendent. Pseudo, transcendent. Shuang hesitated. The M.O. Yang clan had been around for ages with one generation after another. It was an extremely powerful transcendent that founded the first clan bloodline. However, after the death of that transcendent, the M.O. Yang clan has begun to deteriorate. Fortunately, because of their deep-rooted background, Around a few decades ago, a member of the family's legend knights used some form of shortcut and managed to enter the world of transcendence. However, because he is still one of the lowest ranks amongst the transcendence, even some of the peak legend ranks were able to defeat him. Shuang instantly remembered his book. In his book, he recalled seeing that woodcutter knight who had awakened their primordial bloodline. That woodcutter knight was able to kill a transcendent with just an axe while only being a legend ranker. It was entirely possible to defeat a transcendent while only being a legend ranker. The woodcutter knight became even more invincible among the transcendents after becoming a transcendent, and became known as the, the strongest of that era. The matters concerning transcendents are far out of reach. Lord Sian chuckled, All I wanted to tell you is, do not offend those of legend rank and higher. Each legend ranker possesses tremendous strength. Especially Si Liang Hong and Xiang Pan Yun, who are the most frightening figures of Azure River County, as they represent the two skies of Azure River County. 
The Si clan is deeply rooted into the Azure River County. Xian Pan Yun is a terrifyingly crazed fellow as well. Lord Xian commented. Crazed. Shuang inquired curiously. Yes. Lord Xian replied, on the bloodshed scroll, not many choose to disclose their real names, but Xiang Pan Yun is one of the few who did. Not only that, he is also extremely fond of killing. However, all the missions are received from the bloodshed tavern so he is not guilty of murder. Killing is not a crime if it is your mission from bloodshed tavern. Shuang frowned. You can go to the bloodshed tavern for missions, however, the bounty of the missions are decided by the tavern itself. The bloodshed tavern will take a commission of 80%, leaving 20% for the hunter. Lord Cian continued, the rewards issued by the bloodshed tavern are set according to the target's rank, strength, background and other aspects. The bounties are usually quite high. Lord Cian whispered in audible range, you should know that Bloodshed Tavern has existed on the surface of this realm for countless millennia throughout history. It company exists with the Temple of the Earth God as one of the two most ancient spiritual forces. Shuang nodded. Gods and spirits did indeed exist in this world. As for, Temple of the Earth God, it was born not long after the birth of this world and shared a history similar to the taverns. It's also the only temple this empire has acknowledged. The others were just devils or demons. Bloodshed Tavern has been providing service to bounty hunters just as long as the Temple of the Earth God has existed. Lord Cian added, Xiang Pan Yun is a terrifying madman, but it is rare to encounter him. That is unless there is someone from the Bloodshed Tavern that wants your life. As for the Sea Clan, that's another story. The Sea Clan is literally spread throughout the whole of Azure River County, so it is easy running into a member. If you happen to meet one, you must be modest. After all, they can just make up an excuse to have you locked away. Unless you possess the strength of a legend rank, and manage to obtain a bronze order. Lord Cian mused, then you have true power at your fingertips, and the Sea Clan would not have the rights to just deal with you any way they want. If you became a transcendent, the C clan would have to show you respect. Of course, I mean a true transcendent, not a pseudo transcendent. The authority of the Bronze Order. Shuang became interested. Yes. This is the next thing I wanted to say. Getting a Black Iron Order does not only represent your identity, but also speaks on the behalf of certain special powers or backers. Lord Cian waved his hand again after which he instantly appeared to be holding a thick book and a dossier. Lord Cian handed over the dossier to Shuang, the reason the Xia clan has been able to survive in this world is because of the constant generations of numerous strong heirs of the clan's bloodline. Long ago, our Xia clan's finest Grand Master Alchemist went on to set rules. Missions were divided into different difficulty levels, allowing the strong ones to accomplish the most important missions. Merit points can be obtained from successful missions. And these merit points can be used to exchange for the things you desire. Lord Cian passed the book to Shuang, this is the book of exchanges. It lists the available exchanges ranging from gold coins, to magical staffs, to killing a transcendent, or even becoming the emperor of the entire empire. As long as your merit points are obtained from prominent and worthy accomplishments from the Xia clan, with enough merit points, you can even become an emperor. Shuang froze. The Grand Master Alchemist from the Human Transcendent Xia clan set such domineering rules. If the merit points are sufficient, it means you could have anything. What about saving my parents? Shuang could not hold back the urge to inquire. If the merit points are sufficient, annihilating the M.O. Yang clan is just a small portion of what can be done, not to mention rescuing your parents. Lord Cian shook his head and laughed in amusement. Of course, everything costs merit points. All of it depends on how much you give to humanity, and how many accomplishments you can show the Xia clan. These are the iron dot leveled missions, and the merit points that come with them are usually low. To even think of destroying the M.O. Yang clan with this amount is hopeless. 
Shuang began going through the list. There were pages upon pages of missions. For example, killing a certain infamous bandit would award one with 10 merit points. Another example would be entering the mountain range of desolation in search of an extraordinary necklace, which would award one with 50 merit points. Eddie E. to watching Shuang, Lord Cian stated, this list of iron dot leveled missions and the book of exchanges, are the most important. You can take a closer look at them, and once you have over 1000 merit points, you will have the right to ignore certain laws, excluding the ones that you can never go against. Even for transcendents, who have the right to not comply under a range of laws, they cannot violate these laws. 1000 Merit Points Shuang was rendered speechless. Missions like killing Gai Bin generally only gave at most 10 merit points. A long and dangerous mission into the mountain range of desolation in search of lost treasure, where the mission wouldn't necessarily succeed, might only award 50 merit points. To scrape together 1000 merit points, it seemed almost impossible. The iron dot leveled missions rewards generally range from 10 to 100 merit points. Lord C and chuckled, bronze dot leveled missions have a minimum of 1000 merit points. I want to ask, what can I do to rescue my parents? Shuang asked. There are many ways as listed in the book of exchanges. Lord C and replied. However, you have to find one that consumes the least amount of merit points. This way, I will be able to find your parents' current situation through the Dragon Mountain Mansion's intelligence network. Regarding the location of your parents, I will lend my aid. However, you must find a way to rescue them yourself. Shuang was unable to conceal his feeling of appreciation. Well, I'll be leaving you with this mission then, to initiate the investigation, and find out my parents' current situation. Leave it to me. Because the M.O. Yang clan is in the Eastfields province, I will need some time. I estimate it will take about a month. In a month we will be able to find out their detailed situations, and at that time I will help you find the easiest way to free them. Lord Cian promised. I'll bother you to do so then. Shui Ying's heart began to beat faster in anticipation. Father, mother, are the both of you in good condition? Very well then, I should be going. Lord Cian stood up. Every month, people from my Dragon Mountain mansion will deliver a news article regarding the Empire and the mission list. You can begin any time, and start earning merit points from the Xia clan. Chapter 29 Parents Pasts You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 29 Parents Pasts Translator Radiant Editor Radiant Shuang, Zhong Ling, and Tong San stood before the gates of the castle as they witnessed the departure of the people from the Dragon Mountain Mansion. With that, they began advancing back into the castle. Uncle Zhong, Uncle Tong. The sound of the crunching snow beneath Shuang echoed as he softly spoke, I have already obtained the Iron Order. It is time to tell me what exactly happened to my parents in the past. Zong Ling and Tong San met each other's glances. Uncle Tong has been around your mother for a long time, he knows a lot more than I do, Zong Ling replied, all I know are the mere words left behind by your mother. Shuang Tong San began as he watched the sky overhead gradually become tainted with falling snow, I came from a remote Lion Man tribe. One fateful day, a powerful caravan wanted to capture all of us, and those who chose to fight back were all killed. After being caught, our names were registered on the list of rebels, and we were forced to become slaves. Rebels. Shuang gasped. The number of slaves in the empire were scarce. Only those who had committed grave sins, such as the killing of innocent civilians, people of nobility, committing rebellion, or those who seek to betray the entire empire, would become slaves. In other words, only those who had committed the most heinous of crimes would be enslaved. Do not be surprised, the empire has been around for more than 9,000 years, and has long been corrupted. With the influences of those powerful families, dirty deeds would not be problematic if they are not obvious. Needless to say, our Lion Man tribe was weak, and with no evidence, who would dare to help us? 
Tom Ling sneered. I became a slave, and through trafficking, I was sold to the M.O. Yang clan. The M.O. Yang clan is one of the most influential and powerful families in the Eastfield provinces, including the Bellfeather County which is all under the complete control of M.O. Yang clan. It has been that way for more than a thousand years. Lion Man Tong San continued, we were given simple names, Tong Yi, Tong Air, Tong San, Tong Si, Tong Wu, and I am that Tong San. When the heirs of the M.O. Yang clan came to pick their slaves, I met your mother. Lion Man Tong San smiled. Back then, your mother was still young, thirteen years old, even younger than you are now. Shuang listened attentively. She was carefree. She would play games happily every day, as an innocent little girl, and did not look down on a slave like me. Even when I was violently abused by the other M.O. Young heirs, she would cry in anxiety, and even retaliate back in anger. Lion Man Tong San looked up at the beautiful snowing sky yet again. All these memories are just some trivial little things. I thought I would live in the M.O. Young clan the rest of my life, but who would have thought, that in the year she turned 24 years old, the M.O. Yang clan would have arranged a marriage forcefully to a middle-aged man who was about 152 years old, 152 years old. Shuang widened his eyes. Mother back then was only in her early twenties, and the other guy was over 150 years old. You must be joking. It is said that the clan is even more powerful than the M.O. Yang clan and is among the top three clans of the Bellfeather County. Thus the M.O. Yang clan shamelessly offered the hand in marriage of such a young lady. Tong San continued, she had never met such a grievance, and facing such a scary situation with no experience, how could she possibly tolerate it? As such, she took advantage of a chance opportunity and escaped. Escaping from Bellfeather County and even the Eastfields province. After a long treacherous journey, she came to the Tranquil Sun province. I followed my master, and so began an adventurous life for both her and myself. Afterwards, I soon became acquainted with Zong Ling and got to know your father Dong Bo Lai. Ha! <laughs> Those years of adventuring were so amazing, battling between life and death, relying on each other, and forming such strong loyalty and friendship. Even when your mother was worried that her past would burden your father and the others, she still revealed her history, Lion Man Tong San said. Zong Ling nodded, we only know of the M.O. Yang clan's current information thanks to your mother. We, who do not see death as a threat, would obviously not fear the M.O. Yang clan. Ha, huh, as such, we do not care. And then your father and master got together. Lion Man Tong San laughed, and she only decided to stop adventuring when she became pregnant with you. As such they looked for a place to settle in, that is when they returned to your father's hometown, the Azure River County. What happened from then on, you should already know as we stayed peacefully in Azure River County for eight years. However, the M.O. Yang clan still managed to find us, and took away your parents. Shuang nodded lightly. So that's what happened, it was already horrible to have arranged marriage, but to a 152 years old man. Even legend rankers could only live at most to 200 years old, and many died around the age of 170 or 180. The M.O. Yang clan is an old clan that spans over millenniums, and the traditional rules of the clan are still strict. Lion Man Tong San continued, your mother will naturally be severely punished for trying to escape her marriage. I do not understand. Zong Ling snickered, these powerful families, letting heirs from their own clans be sacrificed, aren't they ashamed? Or do the elders of these clans no longer care about their younger generations? Zong Ling, the M.O. Yang clan has been around for thousands of years, not to mention they have tens of thousands of members from their clans. They would not care to sacrifice a few. Lion Man Tong San responded. Humph. If they are so powerful, there is no need for a young descendant to be married to a 100 years old guy. If the clan is ruined, so be it, but using such a shameless act of forceful marriage to consolidate clan status, it is plain disgusting. Stand up for mother, she doesn't deserve this. 
Shuang indeed had such angry thoughts. Being powerful, will earn the coaxing from others. Once weak, one should just let it be ruined. There was no such thing as an eternity for a clan. The M.O. Yang clan have caught your parents, what can we do to save them now? Tom San shook his head in dismay. You have contacted the Dragon Mountain Mansion, are there any plans? Zong Ling asked, earning Tong San's attention. We still lack accurate information, right now we can only wait for yet another month. Shuang replied. According to each clan's strength. The entire empire had a total of 19 provinces, consisting of 6 land provinces with the rest being ocean provinces. For example, the Tranquil Sun province's strongest, Eternal Wind Knight, Chi Chiu Bai's clan. Those that had the managerial powers to affect an entire province were considered first dot class clans. Just like the Azure River County's Sea clan. The Eastfield province's Bellfeather County's M.O. Yang clan also had complete control of a county. The Sea clan's strongest member, Si Liang Hong, was a legend rank with her transformation into a blood demon, while M.O. Yang clan's strongest was that of a pseudo, transcendent. Such control over a county in the whole of the empire could only be regarded as a second dot class clan. With the power of my ancient bloodline and my spear, I have strength comparable to that of a silver moon knight. Shuang reminded himself. In the future, I will be fully capable of surpassing Si Liang Hong and that pseudo. Transcendent. Like the firewood knight with his awakened ancient bloodline, who was capable of killing a transcendent with just a swing of his axe. This was his intended goal. If one had such amazing strength, even without asking, M.O. Yang clan would undoubtedly return his parents back obediently. I wonder how my parents are right now. Shuang was anxious. He was worried if anything had happened to them. He did not dare to think, but he knew if anything had happened, he would definitely make M.O. Yang clan clan regret it. One more month, soon there will be news from the Dragon Mountain Mansion. Shuang said, trying to suppress his anxiety. Time goes on day by day. Half a month later, the great mage by Yuan Ji came to the Snow Rock Castle. Shuang personally waited for him by the gates and asked, Great mage, what could have brought you here personally, surely you could have let your servants come. Huh, it would seem that Silver Moon Wolf King was indeed killed by you. I was suspicious before, but now the entire Water Rights town has heard the news. The Bent Blade Union envied your Silver Moon Wolf King fur and was killed by your spear. Now everyone is hailing you as our finest warrior. The white-robed old man, by Yuan Ji, chuckled, as his group of disciples behind him eyed Shuang anxiously. Chapter 30 Neighboring Houses You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 30 Neighboring Houses Translator Radiant Editor Radiant, huh, you have flattered me enough great mage. Please do come in, let us chat, Shuang smiled pleasantly. Okay. Bai Yuan Ji did not dare to treat Shuang as a child, at such a young age he was already able to eliminate the Silver Moon Wolf King along with its wolf pack. In addition, he was now being addressed as Water Rights Town's utmost master. Not only that, in a few more years, it was even possible for him to achieve legend rank, he would become the talk of the entire River Azure County, a county which would tremble under his abilities. Rumors had it that Dong Bo Shuang practiced the spear like a spear demon. In the numerous legends of transcendence, there were some who were crazily obsessed with painting or smithing weapons, or staring dazedly at the sky, and out of the blue, awakened to become a transcendent. He has been crazed ever since he was young and yet he is so strong now, in the future it is entirely possible to step into realm of transcendence, by Yuan Ji secretly whispered. Of course, it was just a random thought. Those insights varied throughout the madness of generations, and in the end those who became transcendents were too few. They walked alongside each other. Once they were inside the living room, they sat down separately. Zong Ling and Tong San were present at their sides. I heard the news, 
and even now I am still shocked that you managed to to kill Gubin with just a few moves. You even made the entire Bent Blade Union fall apart. I have lived for so long, yet have never seen a young powerful warrior like my lord. I have only heard of the powerful heirs to the great families, but to see this with my own eyes, this is a first. Bai Yuanji smiled. Great mage, you did not come forth today to just simply compliment me, right? Shuang inquired. Those great families spent copious amounts of resources in cultivating their powerful heirs, however, he did not really care. He was not so proud himself because his goal has always been to become a transcendent. Compared to those legendary tales, he considered himself ordinary. Ha ha ha, yes. I indeed came today with a favor to request, Bai Yuanji said. Please do say it. I will do my best to help, Shuang replied. Well, while I was staying in my mansion in Water Rights Town, I was often bothered by the nobles, and I can no longer stand it. Bai Yuanji sighed in despair. Besides, there are some other mages that took an interest in my studies, resulting in frequent break-ins to steal my results. Because I was able to obtain fruitful results from the Silver Moon Wolf King's heart you had given me I was afraid of such problems. Hence, I decided to move away, leaving Water Rights Town. Moving from Water Rights Town. Shuang froze. Then, have you decided on a place to stay? His younger brother was about to embark on an apprenticeship with this man. Ha ha, have I not came to seek my lord? I wish to choose a secluded place on your snow rock mountain and build a small house to live in. Bai Yuanji laughed, my lord, your location is tranquil and also located in a mountainous terrain filled with guards and traps, which would keep thieves out. As for the nobles. There will not be many who would trouble themselves to seek after me by traveling hundreds of miles. To disturb my lord, I am utmost ashamed, Bai Yuan Ji continued. Shuang met Zong Ling's eyes. Both of them had the same thoughts. Ha ha, it would be my honor, to have a great mage within my snow eagle territory. It could only count as a blessing. Shuang laughed, there are many mountains in this region and many empty places. Master, be sure to pick an ideal place for your residence. Bai Yuanji's face lit up with gratitude, he knew the chance of offering a place for him to stay was high, but the agreement from Shuang still made him pretty happy. Then, I will begin choosing. This is a trivial matter. The great mage can begin building any time. If you ever need help, just ask, Shuang replied. Building a house is easy, and within my disciples are those who know of earth magic. Bai Yuanji smiled. Building castles, building magnificent cities. It was hard depending on regular mortals to drill and move boulders, especially compared to those who specialized in earth magic, if one was powerful enough, they could split the earth beneath them or create numerous boulders, thus easily expediting construction. Just like Shui Ying's Snow Rock Castle, which was built by other masters as well because although his mother was a heaven rank mage, she did not specialize in earth magic. Shuang and Zong Ling stood before the railings as they cast their eyes into the distance. Looking beyond the walls of the castle, approximately a mountain a few miles away, a stone building was being constructed with great speed under a magic spell. The soil around the area formed into a smooth boulder, and flying debris could be seen everywhere. It was the beginning of the construction, on the walls, sheets of fire and water lay reflecting off each other, and soon, the walls became smooth. Great Mage by Yuanji even began engraving some spell arrays on the walls. Shuang, won't by Yuanji residing here cause trouble? Zong Ling was weary. Rest assured, by Yuanji has spent many years staying in Water Rights Town, and there were no troubles there. As such, there would not be much trouble if you were to reside here either. Shuang laughed, even if there were to be troubles, it would be quite mild. Even if a strong opponent were to come to stir trouble, it will be useless, not to mention those that would be under them. Zong Ling nodded. Shuang was feeling great. Because of the residency of the great mage, Qing Shi would not be leaving him to train as an apprentice. 
there were many hills on the Snowrock Mountains. The peak was Snowrock Castle, and a few miles away, on another mountain, would be the Great Mage's Building. Between them, a full five miles away from the building and three miles from the castle, on the hills, a new bamboo building was being built. The bamboo building was built by Shuang, and for a great master who has reached the realm of perfect power control, it was beautifully constructed. From today onwards, I will spend most of my time living in the back mountain where the bamboo house is, Shuang told Zong Ling, Tong San, and Qing Shi. As for the things happening in the territory, I will be troubling you Uncle Zong. Make sure to find me if there are any grave matters. Okay, Zong Ling nodded. Brother, won't you feel bored living in the bamboo house alone? Qing Shi asked out of curiosity. Huh, not at all. Shuang smiled. This had been on his mind ever since he reached mastery in spearmanship. Once his spearmanship reached a certain level, he had a different view on the world around him. Dot the growth of the grass, the heavy boulders, the breezing of wind, the fluttering of leaves, everything made him feel amazed. He had missed so much all these years. Look at how beautiful the world was. For him, living in the secluded bamboo house was a form of enjoyment. Practicing with his spear. Another perspective. Similarly, some soldiers possessed very general foundations. Even with training alongside the boundary between life and death, their skills were flawed, but with constant practice, they perfected them. Becoming one with their weapon and becoming its master, they embarked on and mastered their own path through the heavens. Shuang was different. He did not like to force himself to live on the edge of life and death. He preferred to live normally and gradually polish his skills, understand his weaknesses, and then perfect them, such an incomparably powerful foundation was more trustworthy and dependable but required an extremely insane practice regime to achieve. This produced a solid foundation of spearmanship, naturally allowing him to become one with his weapon. As a result of his close brush with death when battling the Shadow Leopard, he reached spear mastery. In fact, even without being forced to fight between life and death, in another year or two, he would have naturally been able to break through. Shuang preferred wisdom like this rather than numerous adventures between life and death. Brother, can I come over to visit you often? Qing Shi inquired. Huh, anytime. I would even visit you. Shuang laughed. Zong Ling, dressed in black, stood there watching Shuang before sighing deeply. In regards to his master's worldly nature. It was easy to say that trying to reach the same level of comprehension or even its fringes was difficult. Since then, Shuang always resided behind Snowrock Mountain in the secluded bamboo house. He began cutting wood, cooking, drinking spring mountain water, meditating, and practicing his spear techniques in the bamboo forest.